Hi, thanks for joining another video today. I've been seeing comments of people saying they reserved or will be buying an EV soon. So then you may be thinking, okay, now what? What's next? What should I do to prepare? Today I will be talking about some points that may be helpful. If you want a more in-depth and detailed video about EV basics and how they work, I suggest you check out my EV 101's video where I talk about charging connectors, levels of charging, and other useful pieces of information for new owners. Today I wanted to suggest some broader next steps and if you're like me, you're probably anxiously waiting for your car and watching YouTube videos to feed that excitement. First things first, before you take delivery of your car, you will need a plan to charge. And I don't mean a charging plan, but they do have those. Ideally, the majority of your charging will be done where you live. If you're in a home, you will want to look at installing a 240 volt outlet or a wall charger. Though, if you have a shorter commute, you may be able to use a regular wall outlet. Just know that charging off a regular outlet can be a bit slow. You'll get about 30 to 40 miles overnight. You should also check what charging connectors your vehicle comes with. You may need to get an adapter to fit your needs. If you plan on installing a wall-mounted charger, there are a few options you may want to look at. For example, some auto manufacturers have their own they suggest using, but you're not required to get that specific charger. For Tesla vehicles, the wall connector is the best option for charging at home, but the included mobile adapter is also a very good option. For other EVs, wall-mounted chargers from Clipper Creek, Siemens, ChargePoint, and Juicebox are great options. You may be lucky enough to have workplace chargers on site or some nearby within a walkable distance. They're not necessary, but always a perk if they exist. If you live in an apartment, you have options as well. Just make sure to plan ahead. Like I said earlier, you can charge off a level one outlet if there is one available to use, though it's slow. It may be sufficient for your daily commutes. If that is not an option, then public chargers will be your next step. See which chargers are available around you and you can plan your grocery trips or errands around your charging times. If you're inclined, you can request for a charger to be installed at your apartment. ChargePoint has a process and flyer you can give your property manager to consider adding chargers. If you're as eager as I was when reserving my EV, have you refreshed your car reservation page today? Nope, no bin or date or delivery. Okay, let's continue. If you bought a new EV, you might be eligible for federal tax credits of up to $7,500, depending on the brand. For EVs and PHEVs, the credits will start to phase out once the auto manufacturer reaches 200,000 alternative fuel vehicles sold. Tesla has met their max for federal tax credits, so you can no longer get federal tax credits for any Tesla vehicles. Here is a quick run-through of some popular EVs that are still eligible for credits. Ford Mach-E, Audi e-tron, BMW i3, Jaguar I-Pace, Mini Cooper SE, Polestar 2, Porsche Taycan, and the Volkswagen ID4. Those are just some to list, but there are more. To see a complete list, make sure to check my webpage under incentives for useful links or go straight to fueleconomy.gov. You may also have state incentives available. Here in Arizona, we get reduced vehicle license tax and carpool lane access. In New Jersey, you can get up to a $5,000 rebate when you buy or lease a new electric car. In Louisiana, you may be eligible for a tax credit of 10% of the cost of the vehicle up to $2,500. California has quite a few for state and cities. For instance, they can get a rebate of up to $4,500 for battery electric vehicles through the Clean Vehicle Rebate Project. There are different incentives based on your city and state. To learn more about these, you can visit Plug Star by Plug in America or the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Don't forget to look at your utility company. Some may offer an EV plan or specific EV charging rates with reduced prices for charging during certain hours. Others can even offer a little cash just by registering your car in their EV program. I've even seen some power companies offer a $5,000 rebate towards a new Nissan LEAF, so that's something to look out for. Lastly, you can also get a credit for installing a charger in your home. This means you can receive a federal tax credit of 30% of the cost of purchasing and installing an EV charging station, up to a purchase of $1,000. So when I mentioned earlier about getting a charging plan in place, well, this would be a valuable incentive if you purchased and installed a charging station. By the way, have you refreshed your reservation page again? Nope, not yet. I highly recommend downloading a charging locator app. PlugShare is a popular and useful one. Your car might have a charging station locator integrated with their maps, but it's still always useful to have PlugShare. With this, you can see different chargers and charging connectors. So while you're waiting to receive your car, check that out. Charging apps will be especially useful if you live in an area with no charging on site. So what does a charger look like? This might seem like a silly question, but if you've never charged at a public station, you may not know what they look like. 
They don't have a large sign above them that says electricity, but they do stand out. They may look like this. This is a Tesla supercharger. Electrify America chargers look a little different depending on location, but this is what their new chargers look like. EVgo has a few different chargers as well. Some of them have full stations, some are just single stalls. Blink and ChargePoint chargers are scattered just about everywhere. This is Volta. It uses its advertising sign to provide free charging. You can find chargers in parking lots, shopping plazas, even high up on a pole or even on the floor. Electricity is almost everywhere. How might you be paying for these chargers? It depends on the charger, but you can pay with a credit card, through an app, or through their membership card. Plug-in charge is a new feature that's getting rolled out to certain EVs. It allows you to just plug in and the car starts charging and bills your credit card. It's really convenient. Have you checked your reservation page again? Okay, you've got your charging set up, you've got your app, you've gotten all your incentives. Have you looked up and compared car insurance? If you are in California, you could look at Tesla's insurance. As of now, it is only offered in the state of California. It would be a good idea to compare quotes from several auto insurance companies before purchasing a plan. Some insurance companies do require a VIN to do a full calculation for the cost of insurance, but you should be able to get some estimates without it. Here is something else you can do while you're waiting. How about planning your first EV road trip? There are several resources and apps you can use to plan a route, like a better route planner. Once you're comfortable with your car, you'll want to take it out for a trip, of course. You should see which hotels offer charging, though it's not necessary, it's convenient to have nearby. There are even some that offer free charging for their guests. You might have purchased some accessories for your new vehicle, but here are a few that I suggest. Again, not something that is required, but items that may be beneficial. Many EVs do not come with a spare tire, since not having one reduces the weight and it also cuts down on costs. As a result, you may want to invest in a tire repair kit. These are always useful for any vehicle. The other item is a set of jack pads, which look kind of like hockey pucks. Tire shops may have these already and you will probably have to request them to use them. I like keeping a set in handy just in case they don't have any to use. These jack pads protect the car's battery from damage when the car is lifted. For example, this is a Model 3 and this image references the spots it's safe to lift the car from. Lastly, if offered, you can purchase additional charge adapters if you want more options for charging on the go. So you've done all your research, you're ready for your EV, but it's still saying you are still two to three weeks or longer to get your car. I've got some final useless yet time-filling activities you can do to make time go faster. You can always snoop around the dealerships to see if you see your car, but they probably wouldn't like that very much. Hmm, Kaya, do you see our car? Is that our car? No. That could be our car. Hmm. Ooh, I like that car. Nissan. Kaya, do you see any leaves here? Toyota. Mm, maybe soon. Look, Kaya, there's Hyundai. See any Konas? When you're out and about, you'll notice all the outlets where you can charge from. But make sure you get permission first before plugging in anywhere. Like, by this tree. Can I charge here? Hello? Can I charge here? Oh. Can I charge here? Hopefully by now you've test driven your EV, but maybe you just want to test drive it again because why not? I mean, this is probably like my 10th time. There you have some items to prepare for your EV and some that just passed time. Helpful or not, I have now moved you a few minutes in time closer to your delivery date. Oh, I forgot, have you checked your reservation page again? I'll link the web pages that I mentioned throughout the video today in the description. Of course, you can also find them on my webpage at kaizv.com. So which car are you waiting for? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at kaizv and kaiztesla. Kai's my dog. That's all for now, and happy charging.